hello hello everyone my name is bonnie and welcome or welcome back to my channel so today we're going to be doing a another alcrate unboxing so alcrate once again has arrived pretty timely for me just unfortunately i've been so busy i haven't gotten a chance to film my unboxing for you guys so i'm happy to finally be doing that today this is a June's box and that is the theme of romance and rivalry. So definitely intrigued on what items and fandoms will be in here because honestly, once again, I don't remember what they've teased on Instagram. Um, you know, it's been a hot minute. So I guess without further ado, let's get to the unboxing and seeing all of the goodies and books inside. Alrighty, time to see what is in this month's box. Na, 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 na. So here we have our spoiler card for the month. I will definitely be checking this out later for items in the box, what they're inspired by, suggested to use for. Um, this is a very different um, art style of a card. Usually Alp Crates themes have like cute little cartoony people on it, so different vibe. We'll have to see what this means for the box. Oh wow. I feel like this is the most packing I have seen them do in a hot minute. So let's grab this little side item here. Oh my. Oh, it's under everything. It is a Crescent City tote bag. It says Crescent City University. And then I'm guessing some Latin per amorum Omnia fairy posse? No clue, no clue. But I love a maroon moment, I love a tote bag, but I will definitely show this to you guys afterwards as well to get a better um, idea of what this visually looks like. Okay, I guess I have to move this mound. Oh, I feel things. Okay, that has shown up this item. So we have this kind of drawstring little pouch that says the stars incline us, they do not bind us, which I know is a quote from Chloe Gong's These Violent Delights. So cute bag. I love the little like lily lotus <laughs> roses going on here. Um, but let's see what is in, in this little pouch. Oh! Oh, we have a cute little comb that has those stars and flowers on it and it feels like really nice quality so cool okay <laughs> reaching in these worms again let's see appears to be a magnet that says the bright star holds even as the darkness rises cs paquette dark rise okay well that tells me what it is um but um i haven't read it yet so <laughs> can't really tell you how hyped i am about this but it looks pretty nice um i wish you could see like the background a little more um because it looks like it's got some like cool like patterns going on amongst the stars but in person it's a little hard to focus behind all of this um swirling font but this is a huge magnet <laughs> like dang potentially i'll put this on my tbr cart okay let's go for the monthly pin so we are now on design six of twelve for their literary luggage pin we're halfway through so let's see what this month is to get you guys even closer because there is a lot of details going on um, but I see above the awning it says Pan's Patisserie it does say Bon Voyage Belterra um, I'm not 100% on what this is inspired by um, I'm only thinking of like serpent and dove pastries going on uh, but I can't think of anything else so I will definitely look at the spoiler card for clarification. Seeing more things now so let's grab oh okay so we have our next redone redesigned classic cover 
Um, previously we had gotten Frankenstein. So our next one is Pride and Prejudice with a writing desk and some fun looking wallpaper. Here is our spine. In the back with a curtain, more wallpaper. It says, you must allow me to tell you how ardently I admire and love you. And then, yeah, pretty floppy. So cool. Ooh, what do we have here? This is similarly made like a wooden bookmark. Um, it says, a good book was its own brand of magic. Stories made everything possible. And we have like snakes and roses and constellations and books. And it does, it does have this like little string that's slightly elastic for you to hang it. So I'm assuming this is some kind of wall art print. But this is really interesting. I've never seen like a wood art print like this because it is super heckin' thin. So pretty pretty unique okay it's book time so our book of the month is together we burn by isabel benes let me get this out of the plastic and check it out further so here is our cover again i'll get in even closer so you can really see the detail going on with their illustrated characters she's got like this cool looking fan and fire and I love the detailing on like the clothing. Very cool. The cover does have like that soft kind of velvety texture to it. Here is our spine and the back. We've got nothing going on on the edges, sadly, but okay, we got some end pages they look kind of like scales but they could be armor i'm not sure there's our back under the cover Ooh. okay our hard cover we have this flame heart <laughs> doodle art going on with some stars and it says we catch on fire under a million stars Here's our spine, which is a definite font. Oh, and then the back has another fan. That's really pretty and stunning with the gold going on. Like, that's awesome. So we do have under the dust jacket art, and it looks like there's going to be a dragon in this story, so that is hype. Um, but yeah, this is like really cutely done. We got a little cityscape going on as well, so really cute. Our theme for July is courtly intrigue. We got a lot of flowers in purple and looks like Maleficent horns going on. So let's see what our little sneak peek is. Every July box will include an exclusive enamel item designed by Band of Weirdos. Okay, I'm not familiar with them, but you know, as always, whatever they tease for the next box, I'm usually pretty happy with. So that's exciting. Okay, unboxing is now complete. So I have grabbed the spoiler card here, which again, I'm kind of surprised that this is not the same like cartoony style to it that we're used to seeing um, each month. So I don't know if they like switched artists or they just wanted to change the vibe of it because it's romance and rivalry so maybe they wanted something more like dramatically sultry than the cute little illustrated people i don't know but this is what i'll be referencing to kind of refresh what's going on with the items and what they're inspired by because like some of the things i think i got correct but I never know. I never know. So let's go through them. So the first one I wanted to go over a little bit for clarity and comparison is the Pride and Prejudice text, which again, there's a series of items they're doing sporadically per box of getting a um, classic book that relates to the theme and somehow and casting a new cover over it and sending it our way. So we have the 
black, white, purple of Pride and Prejudice and the first one in this series we received was Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. So I have them even closer for you guys to compare but as you can see Frankenstein is slightly shiny but it's nowhere as shiny as the Pride and Prejudice one but I do love that they are sticking with the black, white and then a color to set it off. And then we have our spines together as well which they do go together but I feel like it's not as cohesive with having Pride and Prejudice kind of like cut off here while Frankenstein like continues all the way down nearly to their little owl crate symbol. Honestly it's kind of weird to do that on the spine when they still have the rest of Prejudice to spell out but so be it. Um, and yeah, just like the, the texture of them as well, like the Frankenstein one is slightly more matte while this is definitely shiny smooth, that's for sure. And then the back comparison is also kind of the same situation going on. Frankenstein is way more stiff, I will say, than Pride and Prejudice, which is so floppy as I was showing you guys when I first pulled it out of the box. So yes, they're of the same series, but I am very surprised that they have changed so much in the formatting um, texture wise. I prefer like the matte feeling of the books. Floppy wise, I prefer Pride and Prejudice. Actual text wise, I prefer <laughs> Frankenstein. Um, Pride and Prejudice is just okay in my opinion and I've read it multiple times through school so I already have like a couple different editions um, in my collection already, but this is definitely the prettiest one I personally own. So I will be keeping my hands on this one and I like that, you know, they're a series going on. So while I'm surprised they aren't entirely cohesive, I am definitely intrigued to see how this series continues on. Um, and you know, it's just nice to have a, another book in a box. As for our wooden hanging wall art, I don't know why I didn't try to like guess what fandom this was inspired by, but this is based off of The Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco, which now that you say it, I see it. It's got the witchy vibe. It's got like the snakes going on, like it makes sense. I just didn't think about it. I was just like, oh cool, I've never seen an art print like this. I didn't love Kingdom of the Wicked, but I think this art print, clearly with me not even trying to guess a fandom, it works whether you're in the fandom or not. Um, I'll just have to find a spot where I can display this because this is quite unique and cool to add to my print collection, that's for sure. Next item I'll show, I mean I already knew what the fandom was, but I wanted to show it to you a little better visually this way than on my floor, but that is the Crescent City tote bag, which, ooh, <laughs> which is quite big. Now that I'm holding it up, I'm realizing how stinking big this is, which that's cool. Um, yeah, it's got a pretty long strap, pretty much the length of my hand and forearm, um, so that'll be great for carrying your books and everything. Um, nothing's going on on the back, it's just the front. Um, the material of it does feel like kind of thin, not like the sturdiest tote bag ever, but I definitely think it'll take the weight. And then the bottom is pretty big, so you can tell it opens up pretty wide. <laughs> So it'll be roomy, that's for sure. Um, the only call out I want to say is that, so that mine has quite a few like strings coming off of it. Definitely more on this side. See, there's one right there, one right there. And I'm not even like pulling them out. I'm just like pushing them up for you guys to see that they are there. So that's like a little, mmm about the finishing of the actual product, but I think the print of it is really nice. I love maroon, I love bags. So regardless of like the few strings imperfections, I can cut those off. Um, I'll definitely use the tote bag. I have not gotten around to reading Crescent City, but it looks pretty cool. I like the simplistic vibe of it. So 
yeah, I love bags. So technically I'm quite happy. <laughs> and then I was correct that these two items, the little baggie and the little comb are inspired by these Violent Delights, which I absolutely adored. So I'm always happy to have a, another item inspired by them. Um, and you know, this little baggie, when I first pulled it out, I was thinking it reminded me of like a reusable bag for like straws, you know, like reusable straws. Um, so if you don't want to keep putting your comb back in it every time, um, I think that would be a good idea to maybe use it that way. Or like if you need to travel with some utensils rather than using like plastic utensils, uh, I think this would work that way as well. And then the one other item I wanted to go over for clarification is the pin. So I was correct that it is inspired by Serpent and Dove and the spoiler card says that it is um, designed this way to make any Francophile foodie swoon. Um, so I'm kind of impressed that I got it correct, you know? Cause that was, that was a long shot for me. That was a long shot. I read Serpent and Dove like I flew through it a couple years ago and I don't remember much of the plot. So I'm impressed, but yeah, this is really cute. Um, and yeah, it just looks like a cute little patisserie. So once again, it doesn't really matter if you're in the fandom or not. It just looks like a cute little pastry shop. So that works. Now it's time to go over the book, which the spoiler card, which, oh wow, you can really see the vibes coming together. Um, the spoiler card for it says that it is a lush, enchanting standalone fantasy inspired by medieval Spain, filled with a fiery enemies to lovers romance, adventure, and just the right amount of danger. Okay, I already feel like I can vibe with this for sure. So let me read the full app to get a more clear vibe of what's going on, but I'm intrigued already. An ancient city plagued by dragons. 18 year old Zarela Zalvadar is a talented flamenco dancer and daughter of the most famous Dragonator. Dragonator? Yeah, there's Dragonator in Hispalia. People come from miles to see him fight in their arena, which will one day be hers. But disaster strikes during one celebratory show, and in the carnage, Zarela's life changes in an instant. A flamenco dancer who must become a dragon hunter to save her family legacy. With the dragon guild trying to wrest control of her inheritance from her, Zarela has no choice but to train to become a dragonator. But when the most talented dragon hunter left in the land, the infuriatingly handsome Aruto Diaz de Montserrat withholds his help. Zarela cannot take no for an answer. Without him, her world will burn. Okay, I'm intrigued. I've been in the mood to like read a dragon book, you know? It's been a hot minute for me and I'm like, I want that. Recently, <laughs> Finally watched Shang-Chi, so I definitely was like, you know, I need more dragon vibes going on. So lo and behold, how exciting that this just showed up for me. I'm here for the dragons, the baddie, and whatever the romance is, hopefully it's, it's good. <laughs> it doesn't look too long. I feel like a lot of other dragon books are quite chunky. So I might get to this sooner rather than later. We will see. Okay, so it is now time for me to pick out my favorite item of the box. And it's taking me a hot minute, honestly. Like, these items I feel like are all very unique this month. They're very appealing to me regardless of if I'm in the fandom or not, or if I've read the book or not. But I think I have to pick out my favorite item as the These Violent Delights item. Um, I love These Violent Delights and I think these items are just really stinking cute. I love that even the case that it came in is totally reusable, repurposeful, um, and it's got like really cute designs on it. The comb, it feels like really great quality. It is wooden as well. And I love that it also has the same um, flower star designs going on. It definitely feels like this will last a long time because, you know, it's wood. It feels sturdy, but it also doesn't feel 
heavy either so it definitely it's the moment it's the moment <laughs> But yeah, I guess that'll about do it for this unboxing. So in the comments, as always, I would love to know what item really called out to you or intrigued you the most. If you're hype about this book, are you in the mood for dragon books too? Let me know. But other than that, thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed. And I hope to see you here for the next one. Bye.